Well, good morning, church. Good morning. It's so good to be with each of you here this morning on this beautiful Sunday morning. My name is Pastor Haley, and I greet you in the strong name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. We have a special Sunday this morning. Sima Samo is going to be preaching for us, bringing the word. And we also have not one, but two baptisms today. So. It is going to be just a beautiful Sunday. We're actually going to end our service with the baptisms, and we're going to do them outside. So um, don't leave after service, because it won't be over yet. So we'll have, we'll have those to celebrate. Um, well, we want to know that you're here in worship with us, so we invite you to take that red folder that's in the pew and, and to fill it out with everyone that's here with you. If it's your very first time here with us this morning, an extra welcome to you. We're so glad that you're here. We have a first-time visitor card in the, in the pew in front of you. If you'll just take that and fill it out um, with your information, you can hold, it, hold on to it until the offering plate comes around a little bit later in the service. We also want everyone to fill out one of those blue prayer cards. Um, we believe in the power of prayer, and we want to know how we can pray with you and for you in this season. Well, the kids got back from kids camp this week, and Miss Gina's going to share about that a little bit later in the service, but I know they had such a good, informative week. And all of the youth in the room, they are leaving for mission trip on Saturday. Yay! <laughs> Such a great group that is, is that is going, so be in prayer for them as they, they um, prepare to head out to Louisville, Kentucky on Saturday. I will be joining them as well, um, but just a little bit later in the week, so I'll, I'll keep you updated with how things are going. Um, we'll get, we've got a lot going on this week, um, but just a, a few things to highlight. We still have VBS painting going on, so if you love painting and you want to help prepare for VBS, um, that's on Wednesday night. Um, and there are still things in the foyer, so if you have, if you want to bring things, there are still needs, both volunteers and items, um, if you want to bring those for, for VBS. And VBS is July 8th through 12th, so mark your calendar on that. After church today, we will also have, if you are interested or if you signed up to be um, part of our welcome and greeter team. Um, we're going to have a quick meeting after church. We ordered pizza, so there's still be food, but we're going to walk through what that process looks like. Um, I got a lot of emails bounced back. So I, I don't know what happened. It might have been my fault, but um, if you cannot say today, that is okay. We will have another training. Um, we'll go ahead and, and schedule that. So, At this time, I invite you to stand and to greet those around you.
Yeah. Uh, we went to camp this last week. We had four girls come camp, and um, Erin Gravitt uh, went with me as well, and she, she, her daughter went. And we had a really good time, and we went on Tuesday, we came back on Saturday, and we talked a lot about God's Word. We talked about God's Word is alive and active, right? Alive and active, and that God has breathed life into Scripture, and that the Bible is like a compass for us. Yeah, there's some pictures up there. The Bible is like a compass for us to show us the direction we need to go. So we talked about that. We did worship two times a day for an hour, and then after worship, um, we broke into small groups so they could meet with other kids from other churches. We were in a cabin with 20 girls, right? Lots of girls. Um, well, that was just on the bottom floor. We had 24 more on this side of the top, and 24 more on that side of the top. So we got a lot of girls. But um, we had a really good time. Can you tell us what your favorite thing at camp was? Um, the pool. The pool? <laughs> so she could get in the deep end the whole entire time she was there. And there was a lake and paddle boards and zip lines and a gift shop that was very popular. But we had some visitors come to camp too. Pastor Haley came and brought Elizabeth and they visited us. So it was just a really good week. And I will say that my favorite time was worship time. To see these kids, to be so focused. We have a guest preacher come in. Um, that spoke every day. Um, worship, like I said, was an hour, twice a day. We had lots of salt worship songs. We had a great band to watch these kids praise Jesus for an entire hour and not and be focused the entire time was pretty exciting to me. So, but, and I'd like to thank everybody that helped us to get to camp um, with donations and um, things like that. We had a good time. Thank you. Have a good time, everyone. Thank you. 
comfortable for our hymn of faith, Grace, Grace, God's Grace. And the same grace that David experienced is available for us today. <laughs>
scripture reading is from Second uh, Samuel chapter seven, starting verse eleven. As they did it at the beginning, and have done over since the time I appointed leaders over my people Israel. I will also give you rest from all your enemies. The Lord declares to you that the Lord himself will establish a house for you. When your days are over and you rest with your fathers, I will raise up your offsprings to succeed you, who will come from your own body, and I will establish his kingdom. He is the one who will build a house for my name, and I will establish the throne of his kingdom forever. I will be his father, and he will be my son. When he does wrong, I will punish him with the rod of men, with flongings inflicted by men. But my love will never be taken away from him, as I took it away from Saul, whom I removed from you. Uh, from before you. Your house and your kingdom will endure forever before me. Your throne will be established forever. Nathan reported to David all the words of the entire revelation. This is the word of the Lord. Thank you, God. God. Please be seated. Uh, we will continue with the story, with the story uh, that was started. And uh, today is about uh, uh, David. If you read the story, it sounds like that it's about the problem of David had. It's the problem that continued after David. It also talks a little bit about Nathan and what he said and did. It's about deception. It's about cheating. It's about killing. It's about trying to get away with the killing. And it's, you know, stuff like that. It's not, not a kind of a holy story or a good story. But this is a story of God's grace. That God's grace continues. God's grace, no matter, even if the mighty and the best and the strong fall and fail, the grace of God never fails. The grace of God continues even in the midst of our weaknesses. So this is the story of David. David committed sin. With Bathsheba, killed his husband, tried to cover it, confronted by Nathan, confessed his sin, and he was uh, uh, later on, he was told by Nathan, you know, God, is, God has forgiven you, and this is the promise of God that he will establish his kingdom, not David's kingdom. But the kingdom that will go on and on and on. James give us a very good uh, warning. James 1, 14 and 15. But each one is tempted when by his own evil desire he is dragged away and enticed. They, after desires, and then after desires has conceived, it gives birth to sin. And sin, when it's full grown, give birth to death. So it all started that David is up on the uh, rooftop. Why he was there? Anyone's guess. But he was there. And uh, from there he saw a beautiful girl, lady, taking a bath. We don't know what the uh, distance was, where David was and where Bathsheba was, 
But I was wondering, David has a very good eyesight. He could just see far away, 2020. It's a good thing to have a good eyesight, but be careful what you see, what you see. You know, from the rooftop, from the people, from your position, you may see things that you're not supposed to. You may hear things that you're not supposed to. Seeing what you see, hearing what you hear, is not a problem. So what the problem is, desire. So David was up there, being away from the battlefield, not a problem. Being up in the, rock, uh, in the roof, at the rooftop, is not a problem. The problem started when he saw. Okay? Even saw us, seeing someone or watching someone bathing is not a problem. As I said that, we see things all the time. But what happened after that? He watched and watched and watched and watched till the desire took over. He could have said, oh, I'm sorry, and go down in the basement or in his home and start thinking about all the people who was out there fighting for him, but he did not. We can stop at the first step, but when we don't, second step gets more harder to stop. After that, it gets harder to stop. And by that time, we realize we are down there. This is what happened with David. He let that desire take over. My friends, be careful. We are talking about a man of God, man who was anointed and appointed by God, a man who was after God's own heart. We are talking about him. If we think that we, people here, are immune to sin, you, we might be wrong. We need to be careful with our own desires, especially when we are at a position of power and authority. Desire to manipulate, desire to have my own ways, desire to acquire, desire to have what does not belong to me. Someone said it very rightly, that we cannot stop birds flying over our heads, but we can definitely stop them building nests. We cannot stop thoughts coming to us. We cannot stop our eyes what they see or hear. Uh, we cannot stop our ears what we hear, but we cannot stop what we do after that. Do we indulge? Do we enjoy the thoughts? Do we let the desire uh, take over? David's desire consumed him and he forgot what he was appointed for to protect and to care. He used his power to have what he wanted in a wrong way. In other words, what we say that he abused his power. So that's a warning to each one of us. No matter how strong we are, no matter how brave we are, Reminder that sin and temptation could come to anybody. Good, bad, righteous, not righteous, strong, poor, Christian, non-Christians, leader or not leader. It could come to anyone. How we react, it's up to me, up to us. And again, it's the grace of God. We are saved by grace. We are sustained by grace, not by on our own power. Okay, the story continues. David thought he 
He's good. He covered all his uh, tracks. Now he's good. Suddenly he's confronted by Nathan. So we have a person in a story, Nathan, and I was sharing this morning that majority of uh, story, majority of chapters are about David. Nathan's role is very small, very short, few, word, uh, few uh, verses, but very strong. He's the one who confronted David and tells him the parable. And David is so angry by hearing that and said, that person should be punished. Nathan said, well, David, you are that person. And David realized suddenly, uh-oh, I thought that I'm done. I hide every step. I cannot hide. Sin cannot be. You cannot hide your sin. The Bible says, if you hide your sin, you will not be successful. But if you confess God's mercy, God's grace will be upon you. So a few reminders that sin is a horrible thing. Because Nathan came up with that David, you are that person and he came with punishment. Uh, not he came with punishment, but he pronounced what God has said about the punishment, what the consequences of sin would be. So will never leave your family now, David, because you killed. It's going to happen. You took someone else's wife. Someone else will take your wife. What you have done will be done to you. Sin is a horrible thing, and it has a consequences. My friends, if you think that we can get away with our problems, our issues, no one knows, Sin has the consequences. The soul will not leave. His firstborn son from the Bathsheba, that was a punishment, he died. His four sons died. The problem grew up from within and there was a rebellion. So we see all those things that one person who confronted David and told David what's going to happen. If David knew about how bad the consequences would be, that soul will never leave your family or your house, he might have a different understanding of sin. In Luke, we read one thing. One prophet, a man of God, comes to the uh, temple where Jesus the baby was. And Simon said to Mary, your own soul would be pierced by the sword. David was told, the sword will not leave your family. Did David knew that sin would cause the Lamb of God to go on the cross? Do we realize that it was our sin that took him on the cross? Did people of the world knew the consequences of sin is not just nothing happened, but the Lamb of God who take away the sin of the world was on the cross and that's where God's judgment and God's grace comes together and we see it. So my, my friends, be careful. Sin has a consequences. So when David confronted, uh, was confronted by Nathan, David has two choices, reject or accept. So when Nathan today comes up with a word, Everyone has two choices, either reject or accept God's warning, God's word. David accepted it. He realized, he simply said, Lord, I sinned against the Lord. Lord, please forgive me. He was forgiven. Being humble brings a restoration. So David humbled himself. God forgave his sin. 
So we, in our uh, terminology, we call it repentance. So David repented. Repentance is a beautiful word. It's a package. It's a package of uh, three things. Acknowledging that we are done wrong. We call it repentance. And also accepting what God has done for me. Restoration of relationship. After repentance, my relationship that was with the Lord broken, now it's reestablished. So I have restored that relationship and it comes with rejoicing. Now my heart is full of gladness and joy. David, one of his psalms, uh, right. Blessed is a person whose sins Lord forgive and never remember. Our coming to the church, our gathering to the church, is, is that uh, a package uh, that we manifest? We sing, we rejoice, because we know our relationship with the Lord is established through Christ Jesus. John chapter 1, Gospel of John chapter 1, though everyone or whosoever believes in Him, He gave them that authority or power to be children of God. We became God's family. Our relationship is right with the Lord. And it comes with the first thing, we receive what God has done. My friends, if you feel that your relationship with the Lord is not right, your singing, my singing, my worship, my praise, is just like coming to a concert where we sing with someone else and go home. Repentance is a package. And it comes when the word of God is preached. People realize that they need to come to the Lord. <clears throat> so that is the story. Sin, forgiveness. <clears throat> How we understand it today. Because sometimes the story that are told about hundreds of years ago has a different meaning, different impact, different uh, understanding for those people. But when we try to understand it in our culture, in our society, the way we are today, there are certain things that does not match. For example, how do we understand God's grace and mercy where the concept of sin is so watered down or the con uh, concept of sin is so different from that of from the Word of God how do I understand God's grace mercy and judgment or the consequences of sin if I don't believe the sin exists we were in a Bible class today and one of the uh, uh, leader was uh, telling a story about a doctor who does not believe in uh, sleep apnea. Because he said that it was not told, it was not taught in the school. So if something is not taught, it does not mean, it does not exist. But people become so, so rigid in their thinking because I don't know, it means it does not have it. In our culture, in our society, where sin is not taught, the concept of sin, how do we explain God's grace, God's love for them that is on the cross? Where morality has a different meaning, where sex outside marriage or before marriage is common. We do it every day, we live that way. This is our society. We are free to do whatever we want to. Where sin is legalized. Or even in some churches where sin is blessed by the same person who is in the sin. So how do we understand that? How do we explain it to them? It's much more darkness, it seems, as it was in David's day. 
But my friends, God did not leave David where he was. God prepared another person called Nathan. And God has prepared Nathan today who are not taking what is going on as a normal. They are taking God's word as it is and they are preaching and teaching God's word no matter what. Like Nathan, we have people who are not afraid of being labeled as old-fashioned, as conservatives, those who are not afraid of using theologically correct words rather than politically correct sentences. God, and that is God's grace, my friends, that God has not left people without those who can speak the truth, who can teach the truth. Sometimes when I come over here, I see Miss Gina saying simple words to children. My goodness. Like Nathan. Okay. This is what the truth is. Simple. Pastor Hill. Other pastors who took it seriously that this is the word of God. I'm not afraid of telling you. I'm not afraid of sharing you. I'm not ashamed of sharing you. And my friend, when the word of God is preached and taught, things happen. People turn away from their darkness into light. They turn away from death and they come to living relationship with the Lord. They turn away where they are going and they turn back to the cross. They see a grace over there. My friends, I pray that with the story of David, the story of David, we may continue to understand God's grace that works in and through us with the simple small reminders that I am here. I'm holy, but I'm with you. I will change you if you turn to me. May the grace of the Lord be with you all the time. Amen. We invite you to stand and join in our hymn of invitation this morning, number 485. Nothing but the blood will sing verses 1 and 4. <laughs>
Both of these girls came to me separately saying that they wanted to be baptized. And so we talked through all what that meant. And um, last week when I talked to Zoe, she wanted to immediately get baptized. And she said, right now. Um, so, you know, I said, we can do it next week. And then talking with Kaylani, she says, well, I want to get baptized after Zoe. So just so sweet that, these, that we get to celebrate these girls um, today. And so I'm going to invite everyone now. Um, to go ahead and head out these doors. Again, you're going to go out and you're going to take a left, um, and that's where our baptismal will be.